Here I want to show you guys a nice quick trick for deriving trigonometric identities. And we're going to do it via two examples. And here I'm very careful to use the word derive instead of prove because I think these trigonometric identities are at the heart of proving some of the things that we will use in this derivation. Okay, so let's look at our first identity. So it's going to involve sine squared plus, plus cosine squared. And of course we know that via the Pythagorean identity that should be equal to 1, but I'm setting it equal to y, and we're going to think about y as a function of x. Okay, so now from here I want to take the derivative of y with respect to x, so that'll be y prime. So I need to use the chain rule for this sine squared term and the cosine squared term. So here we'll get 2 times sine of x times the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine of x. And then here we'll get plus 2 times cosine of x times the derivative of cosine of x, which is negative sine of x. But now we can see what will happen. Here we have 2 sine times cosine, and here we have negative 2 sine times cosine. So those clearly cancel and tell us that y prime is always equal to 0. Okay, so if y prime is equal to 0, that means y is equal to some constant just by the fundamental theorem of calculus, taking the antiderivative of both sides. So, well, what constant should it be? Well, we can figure that constant by evaluating y at any point. We'll see that y evaluated at 0 is sine of 0 squared, which is 0, plus cosine squared of 0, but that's 1. So, y is equal to a constant. What constant? It's equal to 1, but plugging that back up here gives us sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. So now let's look at another one, and this is going to involve the sum angle formula. So here I've written a function f of x equals sine of x plus y. So here we'll think about x as being the variable and y as being the constant. So I first want to notice that if I take this derivative f of x, so f prime of x, I'll get cosine of x plus y. And then nominally, we also have the derivative with respect to x of x plus y, but y is a constant, so that doesn't contribute anything. Okay, and then next, we'll see that f double prime of x is equal to negative sine of x plus y, using the same sort of logic. But let's notice that that's equal to negative f of x. So what do we have? We have a second order differential equation for our function f. We have f prime of x, sorry, I should say f double prime of x plus f of x equals zero. But if I have a second order differential equation, that means I need two initial conditions. Well, let's notice that f evaluated at zero will be equal to sine of zero plus y or just sine of y. And then furthermore, f prime evaluated at zero will be cosine of zero plus y or just cosine of y. So let's see, we have a second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, and then we've got initial conditions. Okay, so let's think about it. How would you solve this second order differential equation? Well, if you've taken a differential equations class, you may know or you hopefully remember that the standard solution starts like this. So here we have f of x is capital A times sine of x plus capital B times cosine of x, where A and B are constants. Well, let's notice if we take the second derivative of this, it most definitely satisfies this differential equation. Okay, so where can we go from here? Well, we can evaluate it at zero and use this initial condition. So on one hand, f evaluated at zero is sine y, but on the other hand, it's a times sine zero plus b times cosine zero or just b. So here we have b is equal to sine of y. So we've taken care of that constant. And now similarly, we'll see that if we evaluate f prime at zero, taking the derivative here, 
we get f prime of x is a times cosine of x minus b times sine of x, we'll see that that means that a is equal to cosine of y. Okay, so now where can we go from here? So now we can take this value for a and this value for b and plug it into our expression for f of x here and compare that to our original expression for f of x. So we have sine of x plus y, which was our original expression for f of x, is equal to a times sine of x, but that's going to be the same thing as sine of x times cosine of y, plus b times cosine of x, but that's going to be cosine of x times sine of y. And that's a good place to stop.